Oh my God, these cell organelles are so tiny. What do I do? Eureka! Huh? I still can't see these organelles. Somebody please help. Hello everyone. By now, you all must have studied the structure of a cell. And I'm pretty sure that some of you find it a little difficult to draw the different cell organelles inside a cell. So today we are going to see how we can draw the structure of an animal cell and we can distinctly differentiate between the different kinds of cell organelles present inside the cell. So what are you waiting for? Get hold of your pen and paper and let's draw this together. Today we are going to see how we can draw the diagram of an animal cell. So for that I have taken this page where I will be drawing the diagram mostly shifted towards the left hand side so that I have space on the right hand side for labeling. Now an animal cell can have any shape or size. So what we'll do is I'll have to keep some space inside the cell so that I can draw all the cell organelles. So the length of the cell I will keep at 11. Now you can make it a circle, you can make it an elongated structure, I will make it an ovoid shape. Now that is your cell membrane. As you know an animal cell has a cell membrane as the covering and at the center it has this nucleus. There are certain animal cells where the nucleus can be shifted towards the periphery but most of the animal cells they have the nucleus towards the center. So this is the nucleus. This is the nuclear membrane. I will be drawing the nucleolus inside. While drawing the nucleolus make sure you do not draw any membrane because the nucleolus does not have any membrane. So just draw dots because the nucleolus is made up of ribosomes and proteins right. So uh, you will not draw any membrane here. These are just made with dots. And we will draw the nucleoplasm denote it with some few dots here that is the nucleoplasm and inside the nucleus the chromatin reticulum or a mass of coiled colored threads are present. Now we will draw the cell organelles one by one. So first and foremost we will draw the mitochondria. How to draw mitochondria? It is an elongated shape like this a rod shaped structure and then we draw a zigzag line inside that is how a mitochondria should look like and you can distribute the mitochondria anywhere you want make sure that the size of the mitochondria is proportionate to the size of the nucleus it should, should not be so big that the mitochondria and the nucleus they become of the same size so you can distribute the mitochondria anywhere inside the cell just making sure that the shape of the mitochondria remains the same you can keep them in groups or clusters all right then we will draw the golgi apparatus now for drawing the golgi apparatus how do we draw the golgi apparatus we usually draw the golgi apparatus like this we draw a few parallel lines curved parallel lines and then we draw some dots and some circles surrounding it that is how we draw the golgi apparatus this entire structure should be present near the nucleus so, I will be drawing the Golgi apparatus here. See the convex side should face the nucleus and the concave side should face the cell membrane and thus there should be few dots and very small circular, circular vacuolish structures present surrounding, surrounding it. So that is the Golgi apparatus. Now we will draw the centrosome that is the centriole and you know that centrioles are rod shaped structures so we will draw the centrioles like this and we will also draw lines because centrioles are made up of tubules so we will also draw lines and the centrioles are present again near the nucleus you can draw it anywhere near the nucleus make sure that you have enough space to draw two centrioles placed at right angles to each other so these are the two centrioles and from surrounding the centrioles you will give out some ray like structures these are the astral rays okay 
Now let us draw the endoplasmic reticulum. Now this is a very critical structure to draw and sometimes the diagram becomes extremely messy if you don't draw it properly. So how shall we draw it? The endoplasmic reticulum will have to be drawn like this membranes wherever you draw it in the form of membranes. So we will have to connect all of them. How do we do that? Start from the nuclear membrane and double line this. And start from here and draw in such a manner that the other one, this one gets connected to this one by this connection. Again from here you can draw another connection. Since the gap is too much, I am drawing one in between. Then this one. So we will keep connecting all of them. Again the gap is too much so I am drawing one in between and finally you can connect it to the cell membrane. Alright, so that is how the endoplasmic reticulum looks like. Now you can draw a few more here. Once you get a hang of how to draw it, it becomes very easy. Draw one side first and then just connect with the connections, just simply connecting with the connections. Okay, do not draw too many, then the diagram will become very messy. Now we will be drawing the ribosomes. Now the ribosomes should be close to the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi bodies in the cytoplasm. So as we know then there are certain ribosomes attached to the surface so of the endoplasmic reticulum. So we have drawn a few ribosomes on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum. You can draw a few more if you want. If you want you can just draw a, a small part as a sample. All right. Now we will draw a few vacuoles. Now vacuoles in case of animal cells are not that big. So do not draw too many, too many vacuoles are, or very big vacuoles. You can draw a few vacuoles which are small in size. But we will also draw some lysosomes. Now for lysosomes and to make it distinguishable from vacuoles, we will just shade the lysosomes. Lysosomes can be of any shape and size, but we will just shade it to make it distinguishable from the normal vacuoles. All right. So that was it. And now we will just put dots for the cytoplasm. Now while you are putting the dots, I usually use a 4B or a 6B pencil and if you use a darker pencil all you have to do is just touch and the dots are formed. Now when you are drawing these dots you have to make sure that surrounding the centrioles there should be no dots. So the dots should be outside these uh, you know spokes that are coming out of the centrioles. So inside the spokes the cytoplasm is extremely clear so we will not draw any kind of uh, dots there. So this is the cytoplasm and we will put dots. Be very patient and gentle. Do not rush because if you rush here and the dots start looking like small lines then this entire diagram will become extremely untidy. Take your time to put dots in every fold so that no space is left empty. Right? And that is the structure of an animal cell. Now we will go ahead with the labeling. So there are plenty of things to label here. So we will first draw a light line here. So we will keep all the labelings on the right hand side. Try to keep at least everything on the right hand side. And we will draw the lines for the labeling with a ruler. And we will try to keep the lines parallel to each other. So you know try to label everything if you are asked to by chance you are asked to label uh, all the parts of a plant animal cell then try to label some of the parts above and some of the parts below by drawing lines from here otherwise everything will become very clumsy. Okay, So I am drawing these lines and I am trying to label the cell organelles as neatly as possible. Now the Golgi apparatus is present here you can't label it anywhere else so it is best that you first label the Golgi apparatus 
again the rough endoplasmic reticulum is present here you can't label it anywhere else so it's better that you label the rough endoplasmic reticulum here and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum here and you know the mitochondria and all that you can label somewhere else where it is still present ribosome also this is something that you can adjust so we will be drawing the ribose if you need then you can draw one or two ribosomes here and there to label it like I will be drawing a few ribosomes here so that I can label them together all right and I will have to label the centrosome or the centrioles on the left hand side because they are way too much towards the left hand side of the diagram now let's label them this is the cell membrane cytoplasm mitochondria lysosome vacuole golgi apparatus rough endoplasmic reticulum smooth endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes and centrioles okay so those are the parts of an animal cell and now last but not the least we will be putting a footer here and we will write an animal cell so hope you found this video useful and that is how you draw the diagram of an animal cell and label its parts so i hope now you can draw the diagram easily do hit the like button and share this video with your friends do subscribe to our YouTube channel and also please check out our website manochaacademy.com and our Android app Manocha Academy for full courses on physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, coding and artificial intelligence. Links are given below. Stay connected with us and keep learning.